I am so excited to welcome back Joe and Kai from Kaiko Fidgets because today we're going to be showing you as part of our self-care September series, we're talking about energy. And this week, energy is a really big thing because as late identified autistics, we're constantly working on where are our spoons going? And it's sometimes like who hid my spoons or who dumped my entire utensil drawer on the floor? And Sometimes energy comes from some really amazing places. And one of those places where we can expel energy, but we can also gain energy is through self-stimulatory actions. And Kaiko Fidgets has some of the most incredible adult fidgets I have ever found. The quality is unbelievable. Hi, I'm Carol Jean Whittington. And you're about to experience the new way to thrive in life and relationships as a late identified autistic by unveiling who you are, what you love, creating balance and being the leader and creator of your best life. Get ready because this is where we go against the mainstream. We say no to outdated society norms and we say yes to who we are in order to create a joy-filled, balanced, and more neurodistinct world. Ubuntu. Welcome to Mind Your Autistic Brain. Welcome back to the show, Kai and Joe. Thanks so much for having us. Kai, I'm really excited because this is like playtime for me and you today. <laughs> We're having adult playtime, guys. So one of the things that's really great is that Kai and Joe are so incredibly generous. And they sent a whole box of these gorgeous, beautiful, amazing fidgets to me. So Kai, you ready to get started? Yep. All right. So I want to start with your favorite. Like if you had to say out of this whole collection, like what's your favorite fidget? Which one is it? Um, the hand roller. Oh, <gasps> Ooh. Okay. Mm. All right. So guys, the hand roller, I have never had one of these before. When I opened this up and I put it in my hand, it's these two round metal tubes and they're connected and you can roll them in your hand and the temperature's like cold. And Joe, didn't you say some people put them in the fridge or the freezer? Yeah, uh, they uh, not not the freezer. Um, oh, not the freezer. Okay, <laughs> I, I, we learned the hard way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> too, hey, that's how we work. Too, too cold, um, but uh, often colds really help, helps uh, to regulate as well. And I find like Kai loves running the house at about sixteen degrees. So we find well, sixteen that, lower than that. Lower than sixteen. Um, we find I'm with you, Kai. So putting things in the fridge can often give um, just that extra input. It's cold as it is, but it will warm up in the hand. So um, the fridge is often a nice, um, gives that extra dimension to the product. But for those of us who get a little warm lately, get a little hot around the neck, I think I might be trying this out later in the fridge. You I'm, also, actually, I'm also thinking about rolling it on my arm. Yeah, yeah. I was just about to say you can actually roll it on places and use it as a massager as well. Oh, bingo! The multi-purpose fidget. So, Kai, like, show me some examples of how we can use this. So, just like that, or like you can use them in two hands. Okay, so between my hands or in your hand solo, and it's really kind of discreet. So, like, if you're in a meeting or uh, you're on a Zoom or something like that. And guys, one of the things that Kai told me is super important to him about how he's created and designed all of these, they're super quiet. Like there's no rattling, there's nothing. These things are super silent. Like you're gonna love it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, Kai, that's one of my favorites. And tell me like the variations, cause I know that mine says it's 250 grams. So tell me a little bit about the weight thing. So there are multiple weights. Um... For people who prefer to hold multiple like weighted things, um, mm -hmm. 160 or 70. Starts at 100 grams. So 100 those, grams. those that have really poor hand function or mm -hmm. um, struggle uh, or little hands. So uh, find the lighter weight easier. So if you're not wanting the weight, but you're wanting the rhythmic stim, um, the lighter weight's great. But we find the majority of people that have anxiety um, prefer the weighted ones. So either 250, 305. And I think we've got a new one coming. We haven't received the prototype yet, but about 475 grams. So really heavy. Oh, that'd be like the Mac daddy. 
We don't know if we've gone too far. We'll we'll know soon. <laughs> well, well, you know what? All you can do is try, right? We are experimenting and finding out what works because it's going to be that might be like the perfect thing that somebody desperately needed. That's right. Oh, we 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 can. What's our family motto? Go hard or go home. Go hard or go home. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Oh, so, I, I'm, I'm going to adopt that one. Go hard or go home. We, we, we kind of figure, you know, even if it helps one person. So like the fact that we had to make 2,000 2, of them at 475 grams, if, if, one, if one person benefits from it, we're, we're kind of job done. And, All right. Um, so I got a question then. You, this is a new product. This is a new addition to this line. When will that be coming out? Do you know? Depends on when it gets here because of COVID and everything. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. We're hoping, we're I, hoping I, October. And especially because we're in lockdown again for another two weeks. So we've already had two weeks lockdown. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're in the uh, Australian state of lo- loving to lock us down. Like literally we've done seven months completely locked down. In, oh, um, that's when I'm, you learn. That's when you really yeah. learn some uh, uh, some good relationship skills, don't you? Oh, yeah. yes. We've already got the proof in the city. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, so we're so roughly around that. October. So if guys, if you are somebody that really is looking for something heavy or you don't know, and you just want to try one out, like maybe try out like it's 250 gram one that I've got, which is a really, it's a nice weight. It's not too light. It's not too heavy. Try it out. And then you'll kind of know if maybe you need to upgrade and, and maybe even try out this new 475 big daddy that they got coming out. That might just be the thing for you. So be sure to keep an eye out on that one. So Kai, I really love of like your first piece that you started with was the bike chain, like this little tiny discreet bike chain that can be used almost like your mom explained it to me when she was showing me, she's like, it's like clicking a pin. Cause you can just like move it. So how do you use it? Like what are some ways we can use this really cool bike chain? Like that, or you can get the sides and push the sides in. Yeah. You, want- you gotta hold it up. Yeah, I gotta get it into the thing. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to do it with you. Here we go. I'm trying to. All right, there we go. To get it into this X shape. All right. So what do I do once I get it into the X? So you can like push it side to side. Oh, it's, okay. It's really yeah, like, I'm not that coordinated. Your hand thing. <laughs> Oh, neat. Okay, I like that. I like that. And and these bike chain pieces, I like them because. They're really sleek. They're like from a design standpoint, they're really elegant and they're quiet, but they've got this perfect amount of movement and they're not sharp, but they've got a little edge to them. So it's like, you can also kind of just go back and forth and just roll it between your fingers. It feels really good to me. So tell me about the different sizes for these and sort of some of the ways that people use these bigger pieces in this bike chain. Do we still do the minis? Yeah, so we've got one smaller, so for a little hand, so for your kinder or preppy kids, it's a nice size. We find the medium, which is what you've got in your hand, suits. The most popular one out yeah. of all of them. Then we've got a size bigger, which is two links bigger, so it's a jumbo. Mm-hmm. Uh, XL, which is 12. And then after the XL, we've got the megas. So we've got 18, 16, 18, 20, 22. And yeah, they were like necklace size. Yeah, so... Um, so we found that, like, and each one's happened because someone said, oh, look, you know, like a man with really big hands finds it really hard to get their finger in the medium. So we went the next couple of sizes and then um, sometimes kids want more flex, so they want more um, more slack. So mm-hmm. we went bigger again. And then um, we found uh, that the mega is sometimes, too, oops, sorry, um, two-handed use. So if you want to use the fidget two-handed, um, oh. a lot of um, uh, uh, cl- customers of ours are, are non-verbal autistic that um, that can be quite oral and, and as long as they're not chewing on them they're quite safe for oral use we uh, take all the grease out using water so there's no chemicals on the on the on the chains which is um, important and um, so and the other way that the megas are used the big ones is the people wear multiples on them on, on their wrist as a weighted, like a weighted blanket or a weighted wrist. So my husband wears about six on his wrist and he finds that really grounds him. But it's it's one of those tricky things to be able to work out. Like you can't, it's so hard to find the right size on the web. So often people will buy a set of the megas, work out which size and then get multiples so that they can load up their wrist. I like that. So you sell them in sets. 
as well. Yeah, so people yeah. can get a couple of them and try it out. I like that. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Really good. Okay. So there is this really neat little gadget that I got in my box. It's these two circles and they're connected with two little pieces of bike chain here. All right. Um, yes. How do I use this? Like, this is like, wow. So it's like folding it over. Yeah, it's kind of like folding it over. It's kind of hard to do it because your hand like covers it when you do it. Right. Okay. So I had, had oh. to show you on camera. Um, it's the most complicated of the ones that Kai makes. I, I'm I'm not co like I'm not coordinated enough for this one. But we, we find once you get the hang of it, it is very rhythmic and quite enjoyable. I and like I, how once yeah. I fold it over, how it slides. Yeah, yeah. And okay. Different weights, different weights and different sizes in them as well. Okay, so these come in different weights and different sizes in this yes, sort of figure small. eight that's, infinity shape. Yeah. Oh, this that's is really small. neat. So and we just, have ones. That have, we have ones that have two links on them. Uh huh. Well, um, and so and then we've also got ones that have bigger rings. Yeah. Yeah, so it just depends on the hand size. So, again, it's really important. The subtleties of um, a fidget um, actually makes a really big difference because um, we're all different. We all like different sensations. So we really try to more than half our range has come because somebody's need hasn't been met by our current range. So then we'll go off and try and um, create something that does meet that need and then we'll, you know, then we expand out the range that way. So we just listen to people tell us, you know, we'd like this or that. So, and that's one of the things that Kai is really good at. Um, uh, and I'm an OT by background. So the combination of the two of us together, we kind of problem solve and come up with new solutions. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. All right. So the thing that was like the super surprise to me, because it was not a sensation that I had ever thought about, or like even was aware that my body would like this little gadget. It is a ring of bike chain with a ball that's suspended in the middle of it. And I was, I had no clue what to do with this. Like I was trying to spin it, which it kind of does. And then I was like, you know, moving the ball in the center. And then I read the brochure, the pamphlet, and it said, put it in your palm, put it between your palms and then rotate it. And I was like, oh, the feel, the sensory feel of that is like, wow. So how did you come up with this one? Um, trial by error. <laughs> well, yeah. Just pure by accident. Again, really hard to get the ball bearing uh, and the fit for the, the yeah, that was. It, was really, it was really at a point where we were just being like a scientist and testing a bunch <laughs> of different ways to make use out of the chain. Um, I love the, it. So the need for that one came out of particularly um, those that have trouble sitting still um, when they're learning or in an education environment or say you're in a meeting. Um, and often, so if you if you bring the hands to midline, um, you actually stabilise your core. So um, particularly those with ADHD, um, move, uh, it's really hard not to, you know, fidget big or move big or jiggle or tap. Um, but having something discreet in two hands actually allows you to bring the movement down so smaller and keep the focus but allow you to still stim and move um, so it's more discreet. Well, so I'm just going to say that as my big movement ADHD body likes to go, this is really good. Like I, ooh, I like it. I like it. It was a weird thing because I had never felt the sensation in my palms. Like <laughs> And, and it's like, it, it's really, I can't, ex I can't describe it. You guys got to go order one. <laughs> you got to go order one of these things. So is that, one's called the, that, that one's called the magic ball. The magic ball. Okay. So Kai, is there another way to use the magic ball that you, that people have shared with you or that you've come up with? I mean, you can just move the ball in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you can just move. It in the I like that. Yeah, I like that. And there's a little resistance there too, which is kind of nice. And then it can also be like super smooth. Like if I sort of balance it just so. I've seen oh. I've seen kids use it like you know the Beyblades, the things that you rip. They'll oh, get two yeah. Of them. yeah, so they get two of them and they like have little Beyblades 
fights with them on the desk. So that is another, oh. not, that's not so much a fidgeting, stimmy thing, but uh, another Hey, thing. it's a way to create connection. I'm yeah, all for exactly. it. <laughs> All right, so we've got this really cool ring right here with all these tiny little rings all on it. Hang on. Yeah. So okay, so what's the name of this one? A centipede. The centipede. It, oh, good name. Good name for that. Okay, so how, like, I was putting it on my finger and just kind of rolling yeah, it and roll, feeling it. Roll it. Um, you can do the same kind of thing um, in your, oh. do the same kind of thing in your hands. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, that feels good. Rubbing it between the palms like the uh, magic one. Okay. I use it, I roll it. Uh, hang on, I'm not doing that one. Well. I roll it back over, like I tumble it in my hands. And you can oh. also, and you can push the um the centipede things in back and forth as well. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. This is kind of like my pen clicking fix right here. Because <laughs> I can yeah, do like one. A light switch, like a light switch as well. So Ooh, this one came, yeah, like this up and one, down. This one came into being because we had a lot of people not liking the hardness of our metal fidgets. So we wanted something with um, robustness but still quite um, soft. So, you know, it's it, it was our first softer fidget and then yeah. came the other one, which you like too, the, cat, uh, the caterpillar, which is the other. This is really one. great because it does give you all of that, but it does also have that silky smooth feel and it's just sort of flowy. I really like that. I like the variety that's here. This is really fantastic. Okay. So I want to talk about these really cool cogs, these gears. Like, what do you call these? What's the name? Um, we call them cog fidgets. Cog fidgets. Okay, guys. And these come in different sizes. So this is like the big one right here, right? Yeah. And then this is the little mini. Yeah. And it's, so it's like perfect size. So I have been playing with this mini the whole time that we've been talking. <laughs> the small one was our original one. And then we got the, um, the bigger one. We had a lot of men particularly saying that they found the little cog too small for their fingertips. Yeah. So we... Um, <laughs> again now go hard or go home like this is oversharing but to get the model made because we ha had to we couldn't get the parts made for that so we had to actually have molds made like it cost us six thousand dollars american just to get the, the actual mold made to actually Ooh. create one fidget <laughs> but we were really sure that uh someone would like it Listen, so, I love that about you guys. I love that about that big go big or go home kind of thing because, yeah. and that you're willing to do that. But the, the big one, this mega cog has got such great weight to it. So I, I find that both the mini and the big one for me, I, they both meet a need depending on how I'm feeling. Um, and I love that it's got sort of this, it's like this anodized sort of oil on water look finish to it, which is really beautiful. And just the details. I mean, that you've got the Kaiko in the middle of it and just the way it's packaged, it comes in this gorgeous tin that it's fitted into. I mean, your packaging is exquisite. I mean, the, the quality of construction is really just beyond. You guys have just done an, an amazing job, but these are silent. Like there is no grinding or clicking or gritty sound or anything. It's super smooth bearings in this and it spins forever. Like I have been playing with it. I can even balance it on my finger. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So Kai, how are, what are some ways that you use these? Um, well, I mean, I only know of like the, just like spin it or like mm -hmm. roll it back and forth or just spin it. That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, I like that. And trust me, like just the spinning part is just like, I'm all on it. <laughs> it is my happy thing. We can we do have some customers that actually use the the sharper points to actually um, create um, higher input um, sensory input as well. That's less typical. It's more and it does have a slight hum. So again, the vibration and the slight hum also often ticks boxes for you. Know, yes, and I'm so glad you said that, Joe, because it ticks my box because I'm a vibration sensitive person and I, I seek it and I avoid it. <laughs> and this has just the right amount of vibration that like goes up through my arm and kind of goes to my chest. That's really soothing. Like it's really calm. It's so nice. <laughs> I'm just going to like spin over here for a minute. <laughs> I'm just going to spin. The music. 
Beethoven, when he played piano, he used his feet because he was deaf. Yep, and I play barefoot because I like to feel the music when I play the piano, so I totally get that one. So we're going to talk one more little thing, and then we got a couple more here to go through, which I think you guys are going to love. All right, Joe, tell me, what's the story behind this this amazing, like really spiky fidget. First of all, what do we call these? What's the name of the line for these? So this one's a finger spiky and we didn't actually invent these. These, they, these have been around. Um, they're actually an acupressure material that um, has initially been designed to stimulate acupressure points. Um, and we repurposed the material as, as a sensory fidget. So I, I like to refer to this as the coriander of fidgets. You either love or hate it. <laughs> some, some love it, some hate it. There's sort of no middle ground. So a lot of people just use it rolling it up and down the finger. But you can actually, if you put it on um, one of the middle fingers and clench, clench a fist, it really hurts. Um, and also if you twist it around the finger, it really hurts. So it gives really high sensory input. Um, but they, these we did create. These are a wrist spiky. So we had a lot of people using these that um, uh, self-harm when anxious or distressed, so non-suicidal um, self-harm. And so we created um, our wrist spikies, which you can wear all day. So the important thing, if that's why you're using it, is to have it so it's not too banding. Um, and when you twist it around like a Chinese burn, it really, really hurts but doesn't break the skin. So um, we've used it. Some people use it as like a sensory input, just rolling it. And if that's how they want to use it, we tend to recommend a smaller size because it's tighter. But the, um, the bigger ones are better for all day wear. And then when you need it in that moment where you're feeling like you, you need to do something to uh, jolt you um, or you're thinking of hurting, um, you can apply pressure and twist and um, it, it'll deliver a, a fairly decent amount of pain without damage. I without was really, yeah, I, I was really surprised by this because uh, you had shared this and I was like, huh, I wonder what that feels like. Um, and it was really interesting because I put it on, I'm like, whoa, that's almost too much for me because I, I tend to be yeah. a sausage. But what's interesting is that like, if I just roll it, just gently roll it, it, there is just an extra amount of skin sensitive sensory stimulation in that that really kind of it's like it's making me more focused it's really yeah. interesting the effect that it has like even just to put it on my finger and then just rub it against my thigh side to side it's an interesting feel because it's like all of a sudden it's like my whole body went laser laser focused and I, yeah. I wasn't expecting that and the other, the other way, uh, we have some people that press it into their lips, you know, people that like to pick their lips um, mm -hmm. but can obviously end up bleeding, so they'll uh, stimulate the lip area to replace mm -hmm. or finger pickers and biters. That's the, the, that tends to be the fidget we recommend for pickers and biters around the nail bed because it sort oh, of gives it... Oh, I'm so bad about peeling my lips. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That. I'm going to have to try <laughs> And I do it mindlessly and I don't, and next thing I know yeah. my lips bleeding because I have just like yeah. bitten it so bad. Oh my gosh. Okay. Guys, this is amazing. Like seriously, this, this is a really brilliant fidget. It, it, it meets some things in our world that we need that sometimes we don't even know we need them like me. I didn't even know I was going to need it. And I thought it was just like, hmm, let me just try it out. But it's, it's actually, it's amazing because it was like, once I played with it for just a little bit, I was seriously like laser focused and I didn't expect that outcome. Yeah. It's, as I said, it's not for everyone. It's, it's one of the ones like the medium chain fidget. We find everybody loves it. They might like one better, but they all like the medium. Whereas the coriander, oh, sorry, not the coriander fidget, <laughs> the spiky. <laughs> I'm so used to saying it to people. The spiky, you either love or hate. But it's it's not actually uncommon for people to have a similar experience. That initially they pick it up and go, ooh. Um, but once they use it for a little bit, um, they're like, oh, actually, no, that actually meets need. Um, so it's it's one of those ones I usually say to people, try it. It may not be your cup of tea, but. So you've got this really amazing kit called The Works. And tell us a little bit about the works, because if somebody's new to this or you're just sort of exploring stems and fidgets, like tell me about the works, because I think this is probably a really brilliant way to kind of introduce yourself and try things out. Um, so the works 
kit is seven of our best sellers and the people, the ones that tell us are like the best use that they find. Mm -hmm. um, so we put um, the, the, the best seven in it. Okay. And so what are those seven things that are included in the works? Uh, you got the magic ball, the infinity one. Uh, so the loop, mm -hmm. uh, the medium, the centipede, um, what's the caterpillar? Um, the spiky, uh, mm -hmm. and the cog as well. Yes. And the magic ball. And the magic ball. So what we were finding is a lot of, because as adults, teen to adults, it's really hard to find sensory products that meet our needs and aren't catered. Um, it can be pretty overwhelming. You kind of look at it and go, oh, I don't even know where to start. So this... This is a really that would be me. Yeah. So and and sometimes you like you said you don't know until you've experienced them. So we put together the kit as sort of like a really nice. Um, it starts at the really softest end. One of the ones we haven't talked about yet is the caterpillar. So that's the softest in the range, and it goes right through to the spiky and everything in the middle. So it sort of gives everybody um, a really nice. Um, diverse experience and then usually in the kit people will find three or four that they really love and a couple that someone else in the house or friends you know really love and they're not so keen on so um, we don't necessarily say it, you'll love everything in the kit but you'll find your thing right which is, right. Which is the key is rather than you know kind of just go hit and miss this kit pretty much will tick so, there's It'll very I've never yeah, you'll tick a box, yeah. You'll, you'll find your fidget or two or three. I, I can say that it's ticked way more boxes than I ever thought. And especially with the spiky, I was so surprised. And the um, the magic wheel, magic ball one, holy cow, like that was a huge shock for me just to try it out. So so this is the caterpillar, right? Yeah. All right, so, so the caterpillar is this beautiful string with these silver beads in it. And this guy's oh my gosh i'm i'm not gonna lie and and if you're um can i cover your ears <laughs> you probably don't want to hear this but when i touched this and i just like rubbed it just like the first time i i rolled it between my hands my entire body tingled it was like orgasmic just saying <laughs> really was i mean i'm just totally made totally made kai uncomfortable here but um, oh no he's 15 it, it was really, yeah i know right i have a 16 and 18 year old i hear all kinds of stuff i don't want to hear so i'm just sharing that's just my that's just you know uh, hey i'm uh, just doing it i'm just oh my gosh when i put this in my hand though it was it was a full body sensory sense like holy cow i was like tingly and it was it was like all of a sudden it was like, I was totally filled with joy and happiness just from touching this. I'm yeah. like, seriously, how does that happen? And, and it's interesting because blokes in particular tend to boys like you, you know, are you? Yeah. Okay, most, <laughs> most, most males don't connect with that one at all. It seems to be more, and that's very general, but uh, uh, it seems to be more a female fidget. Um, we actually, my best friend twirls her hair till she pulls tufts out and we actually created it for her. It's actually a very similar, um, it's a very similar action. So um, it came out of a need from my, my best friend who was um, literally had ball patches and uh, yeah, it's become a staple. Uh, I'm really excited because I have a wonderful friend. He's in the Marines and he twirls his hair. That's his, ah. he's always done that his whole life. Well, um, he's getting ready to deploy on a, for a big duty station. And one of the things that they do is they shave their heads bald. So he oh. sent me a picture the other day and he's like, yeah, I'm totally big smooth, but now I have no hair to twirl. Oh. And it was so funny because the first thing I said to Josh, when we were playing with all this is that I said, I've got to figure out which one of these would be best. And I want to send it to him because I know he's going to need it. Oh. I, I and I'm like, one. now that you said that. <laughs> yeah. That one or this one. This um, one. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 Cause he, he's in a job where it would have to be like really discreet. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether that one will be more discreet for him. Um, it, it's also very like uh, rolling blue tack. It's a very similar because a lot of people stim with blue tack. But, um, yeah. It's uh, just it's beautiful. Just and I, I love the story behind why you created it too because you, like, did it to help your friend. 
I love they that. All, uh, th- that's the cool thing. They've all got stories uh, attached to them, which, um, as we say, we're an accidental business. <laughs> I mean, all great businesses start out as a necessity and an accident. Really, they do. So guys, you have these really cool things called mini squishy fidgets. And they're these little balls that are like, they're like squish mellow. Like, okay, a friend of mine had told me about the squish mellow, like stuffed toys. Yeah. And I touched one in the store and I was like, oh, I can melt into that. I had no idea that this was even a thing. And oh my gosh, these are like squish mellow for your hands. How did this come about? What do you do? Like, Sorry, how does had, this? We had a bigger one. Um, what do we call it? Jumbo? Squish. So, I mean, we, we haven't invented these. There's lots of squishies around. But what we found was that... Um, we had the bigger one. Yeah. And were, people were like, oh, could we get small ones for the hands? So yeah. Most of them are too, too big. You know, you can't stick them in your pocket. And we're all about in the pocket please <laughs> like not because it has to be but just so that you you can carry it with you and it's discreet um so I love the size use it. this and really was so Kai, Kai likes to use them together which I'd never thought of he he rolls them over themselves somehow. oh and I love it's got like just a little bit of a sticky tack feel to the outside but it's so squishy like I oh see that was the thing it was like I love the squishmallow um stuffies and things like that but they're too big and you can't necessarily walk around in public with a big giant I mean you could I probably could but I would be worried about it getting dirty and somebody touching it and I would be mad that they touched it (laughs) so this is like perfect and I love the colors like they're not like it's got this brighter kind of orange color but then it's just like this really pretty teal blue Uh, which is just beautiful the color color choices because of the um the brand logo they're, they're our corporate colors. I know, and I love these corporate colors. They're perfect because they're not like in your face, bright, overwhelming colors, but they're like just really pretty and happy. <laughs> so Kai's favorite color is orange and our other son's favorite color is teal. So that's actually... Oh, that's so perfect because, you know, I can just tell you, uh, Callum and Nancy and I, like we're teal. We love teal. I mean, you see my, my one of my <laughs> logo branding colors is like this teal blue color. <laughs> so I love that this has got this really bright, pretty component to kind of jazz it up it's awesome these feel really good I love the size I wouldn't have thought about this squishy size it's so perfect it really is so one of the last the last thing that we have here guys this is called your spinning desktop gyroscope so it is this beautiful ball and it's got a spiral it's got a flat bottom with this beautiful balanced spin on it so I'm going to find something sort of flat to spin it on here Oh my gosh. So Joe, it, tell me about this. Like it's got a little sound on the box, but not really. Like if it's on just my desk, you can't hear it. It's silent. So tell me like you, you were explaining earlier to me about this one. So tell me about this one, Joe. So uh, it's called a gyroscope. And again, not something that we've invented. They're, 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 they're a product that you can get, but um, the size, the weight and the color is something that we've kind of fashioned for ourselves. And we find that it's a really good um, stim for those that it, it, they're centrally overloaded. So you actually don't want any physical input yourself. You don't want to touch anything. You can't, uh, but it, you need something to focus or calm. So I've seen kids absolutely um, dysregulated or sort of uh, redlining um, and sit for minutes or tens of minutes uh, or even hours to see watching the gyroscope. So it's very calming. Um, it's They call it a desktop. It's a desktop t- tool. So you can use it. Um, it's quiet, but it's, it's, a, it's a visual stim. It's brilliant. And I love it because it does fit in the palm of my hand. It's not super heavy. I mean, like you could take this anywhere as long as you mean, like, I can't do it right now, probably, but um, Josh and I were playing with everything when it first came and, and he had gotten it where he would just do it on his hand. Like he had gotten it where it was level enough to do on your hand. But what I love is it's got this beautiful spiral and then it's just sort of got this beautiful sort of uh, oil on water, um, variation of colors you know sort of like that anodized look to it which is really subtle it's not overwhelming and you can really look at this and it's it is so calming it really is because you know there are so many times where I've reached a point and I'm, I'm sure that you guys can relate to this too where it's just like 
I can't take one more thing. Don't touch me. Don't, don't, you know, even yeah. my clothes feel too much. And just to be able to focus on something, oh, this is brilliant. So the, the last one I want to talk about is just like the fidget that everybody knows this three little ringed fidget. It's got the, the weight in the middle, but this one is different. It's got the poppets on each one. And this one is probably the best manufactured, best quality. Cause I have bought caboodles of these things from my children and for myself. And this one is silent. It has just a little vibration. It spins beautifully. Like I can even, and you can pop these and they're quiet, but you can also pop it and get a little sound from it, but not a ton. See, it's not a whole lot. And like, you can even pop it to where there's one up and two down. I mean, trust me, like in threes, I want everything to be even or balanced or something. So this is kind of freaking me out. But, but even if you do that and then you spin it with the poppets out of sync, it's still balanced. It's still smooth. It's got a little bit of a wobble. So it gives you some extra vibration if you want it. I love this. I love this. This is just really, really nice. And it comes in this beautiful tin. I mean, just the packaging, you guys, is just so gorgeous. Everything that they do is just beautiful. It's so well done. It's all like top shelf, everything that you guys do. I'm just so impressed with it. I really am. So sorry. if you... Huh? I'm sorry, I was going to say, it's just so important that it, it, like, it's purposeful for adults. We, you know, we don't want things in colourful kitty packaging. Um, you want something that looks good on a desk or looks, you know, like it, it looks appropriate. You have you have people going, oh, what's that? That looks really great, rather than feeling like I'm set apart or different um, in, a, in a negative way, uh, drawing attention to yourself. Instead, you'll have colleagues and friends kind of keen to explore as well, which... It, it helps bring, you know, neurodiverse and neuro um, typical people together because, as you were saying earlier, we're all sensory. Like, well, most of us are sensory. There are the odd person that is a little bit not sensory, but for most of us we seek sensory things. So um, it's just nice that um, it's not something that sort of looks like a, a piece of equipment for somebody with, you know, yeah. It doesn't it's, it's not cutesy. It is so elegant and they really are, each one of them are a work of art. They really are. In my book, they are <laughs> anyway. They really are excellent. They're beautiful. And, you know, from a design standpoint and just from a personal standpoint, you know, we all want to surround ourselves with things that are, are beautiful and then add to our world in a visual hmm. way. And these absolutely 100% do. So guys, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for sharing and taking time to go through the works with me and, and go through all these beautiful things, that's, things that you've sent. And for all of our listeners and all of our talk show people that who are joining us from the Mind Your Autistic Brain community, you guys be sure you tune in and check out the uh, Instagram post this week so that you can enter to win some of these gorgeous fidgets from Kaiko Fidgets. And if you want to just, you're like, heck with it, Carol Jean, I just want the works for myself to try them all out. You're going to go check out kaikofidgets.com and you can get the works. And it is an amazing way to try out and test different sensory stems and things that you may not even know you're going to love. I was surprised. I was shocked. I didn't know I was going to love some of these because I immediately put the spiky thing on and I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. And the more I played with it, the more I was like, oh no, I really like that. <laughs> Kai, Joe, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for sharing your incredible business. And you're on Instagram. You're on the web. We can find you. And you're on Facebook, right? You got a Facebook page. We do. We do. So if anybody wants to reach out and just share with you what their, their need is, maybe they've gone through all your stuff, they've ordered a few and they're just like, I kind of need this. You guys still open to some suggestions? Yeah, oh, definitely. Well, like, please. That's, that's the best thing about what we do is we love it because that's how we, like, you know, we, we're, we're limited by our own sensory needs. So when people share some thoughts and ideas, we'd love, like we've got one um, on the website, the Caterpillar that uh, we were showing this one. Um, uh, she's a public speaker here, Penny Robinson, and she's, she's an autistic adult that speaks. She's also a lecturer and she wears a hoodie to block out light. 
and she was fraying her hoodie cord. So she said, look, did I have anything to suggest? So we actually uh, repurposed the caterpillar that threaded through her hoodie. But then we had another client say to us, I don't like the fact that it's asymmetrical. You've got the caterpillar on one side. So she actually sent me these gorgeous drawings of how I could adapt it so that the um, caterpillar could be symmetrical on both sides. So oh, I love like, it. I'm a like, symmetrical girl. <laughs> Yeah, and so, uh, you know, it's we love it. It's, it's never an imposition. In fact, we feel blessed when people um, make suggestions or have inquiries. The other thing I don't mind doing as a therapist and also just as somebody that's really passionate in this space, if people want to connect with me and just problem solve, like want to share with some of their struggles or sensory needs, I'm happy to help them match or make suggestions. And I'm just as likely to say, don't get this or you won't, you know, um, as I, like it, for me, it's really important because sometimes the wrong sensory tool can be worse than no sensory tool. So um, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about making sure if I can help, I'm more than happy to field individual questions. Oh, I love that. And remember the amazing infinity hand roller is going to be coming out in a heavier, like big daddy weight hopefully in October. So if you are somebody that needs a little heavier weight in your hand, definitely keep your eye open for that. Guys, thank you for being here so much. I appreciate it. Uh, so, so welcome. If you are someone who likes to help people and share what has made a difference in your life, please share this talk show with a friend and on your social media accounts so that you can be the blessing in another late identified autistic's life. Be sure to tag me at Social Audi so I can personally say thank you. And to help keep the talk show ad-free, please consider becoming a one-time or recurring supporter through either Buy Me a Coffee or the Anchor Podcast links in the show notes below. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for being a listener and thank you for adding your voice to our story.